Good evening on this Friday night. It is Fish Easy, and thank you already for the thum thumbs up. Evan Nolan is here all the way from Australia. I'm glad we were able to catch you probably on the sunrise. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're going to take a look at all these fry. There are so many fry. Dars Aquatics, thank you so much for joining. We've got a lot of fry in this fish room. And one of the things that seems to always be the case is cycles. We go through cycles when sometimes we have no fry in the fish room. In other words, they haven't laid any eggs or something's going on in the, the breeder box, the breeder tanks. And then all of a sudden there'll be a bloom and it'll be one spawn after another. Hi Sandy, hi Karnak and Dars Aquatics. Everybody's joining us. Thank you so much for joining. And what I'm seeing here is of course, uh, these are not just angels, these are the koi angels. You can tell the difference between an angel that's a koi and which one is a platinum by just noticing the color. They've got some darkness to them. Let's take a look at the, this box. It is um, got quite a few in there, probably a couple hundred. And that's quite a bit. Hi, Ray Aquatics. And everybody's uh, over here is also a couple hundred. This, this fry box holds, at the moment, some of the platinum angels. So you can see the platinum angels, if I can get the focus right. As you can see, there's no color on them. They're kind of clear. They usually have shiny bodies. And they also have um, pink, well, not pink. They're just kind of clear, basically, or whitish. Jeff, welcome, and thank you so much. This is uh, our second box we're looking at. Now, turning around to our nursery section, uh, what you're seeing here is actually one after another. We've got black rams, black rams, black rams, black rams, two of them, angelfish, and more black rams. So right now, it seems as though this section here has got nothing but black rams. And just taking a quick look at them, there's been some success, but also some failure. And the reason why is basically that black rams are not easy to deal with. If they were easy, there would be a lot of them, and they, would be in some, they wouldn't be in such a, a great demand. But in this particular spawn, in this one, we, we did lose a, quite a number. We lost them to fungus, and so of the fungus that spread throughout the, the the particular plate that the eggs were on, there were some that couldn't get reached, and these are the fry that hatched. So they're not even free swimming yet, but as you can see, they're just at the bottom. They're going to become free swimming soon, but right now they, they seem to do well at this stage. When they're not eating, they do well. But once they transition to the state of being uh, having to eat, that's usually where we lose a lot of them, but not all of them. Here, for example, um, this lot we were looking at the last couple of days, we moved them from the, the small pint jars to this particular location, a breeder box, where I could add some dripping water, and that's what I'm doing is just kind of dripping some water in there. It looks like a good number of them died off at the stage where they started to eat. Now, some of them are kicking around still, and so it makes it look like they're they're doing well. But compared to like German blues at this stage, they're not like that. There's something about it, and I don't know exactly um, what it is. It could be one of several things. So we've been eliminating the possibilities. Now this this spawn was split in half because it was so large. So I have two two of these, and they're kind of reacting the same way in both cases. But that means the temperature probably is not the issue. Well, it could be the issue, but I don't think so because they did so well when they were not eating and they were at the same temperature. But what we're seeing here is, okay, just to give you an idea, yes, it's true. And this, there's some that are at the bottom in the back. You see them along the back there, if I can focus on them right. Those Daniels are getting in the way. See right in there? In the back, they're swimming okay. And the summer are swimming okay. But they don't seem to be making it pass into the baby brine shrimp stage. 
So I'm going to try to feed. Now this, this side here has a, quite a few more that are uh, swimming up near the top. See up in the corner there's a couple. But look at this corner. This corner has a lot more. There we go. So there's still a good number in here. And they do seem to be eating. But um, it would be wonderful if, if all the eggs that hatched could start up this way and uh, actually get raised to maturity. But that's a dream that everybody has. That only happens like in angelfish and maybe even some German blues where, it, where that way it works out. Here is, for example, we got quite a number of black rams here, but they're not free swimming yet. So with this group here, what I'm going to do is we're going to try something a little different than usual. I believe that the growth rate and the size of their mouths are very disproportionately small. And that's why they do good with the paramecium. And that's why they do well with the vinegar eels. But I don't think they do as well with the baby brine shrimp because it seems as though every time I start with the baby brine shrimp, which I would normally do for any other small fry, they don't do as well. So let's, let's try putting them on a longer time with a smaller food to make sure they're getting enough. And that's going to take a couple of little tricks such as putting lots of food in and doing lots of water changes. The water changes are time consuming because you have to do it in such a way that you don't get the fry messed up. You can see how small they are just by looking at my index finger. It gives you an idea how tiny they really are. And of course the eggs that came over today, here they are. Two plates of them. There were only a few white ones on there, but I did use methylene blue in this case. I'm not worried about the, the darkness of the blue as we had an issue with the uh, methylene blue with the, uh, the discus fish. So we started using um, we started using the hydrogen peroxide. The peroxide um, needs to be put in every day, and if you forget, it's an issue. So anyway, that's that's it. Now down below, I didn't show you these yet. These are um, angels. As you can see, they're already starting to look. These are ready to move out, and their new their next home will be a tank. I've actually got the tank ready. Um, just to give you an idea, up here there's the tank. We took out all the angels that were in here and moved them over to the grow out center earlier today. If you were on Aqua Malik's live stream today, you would have you would have saw me come in with them. This is uh, the next batch. Probably I'll move them over tomorrow. So as you can see, there's quite a few. Um, these are looking good. They're eating. These are eating small granular pellets now. They don't need baby brine shrimp. They don't need the small food. So it's time to move them on into bigger a bigger facility and then I can move something like this another batch here into one of the tanks as they get bigger so just to give you an idea of uh, how many fry boxes we got going we're gonna do a quick count okay so there's one two three four five six and there's really two there so I'm gonna split that up seven eight nine and the plecos ten 10. We looked earlier at 11 and 12. And then over there we have black rams 13, 14, and these are Lucy's 15, 16. So 16, and then just go back over here to the jars. 17. 18, um, 19, 19, 20, this is not really one because it's just two little, um, these are the two little blue-eyed rainbow fish that got, I don't know, they were kind of, uh, th these, these little guys got left, uh, they, they just got sucked into the breeder box and I found them, so I just put them in here. But uh, this is new for you guys to see. We did get a new group of uh, spawns hitting the egg trap. So another half dozen uh, Danios, glow light Danios that showed up, and there they are. They're doing very well. 
So I can't remember if I counted this one. That would, if we skip the Daniels, that's 20. And then of course I have 21 ready to go. This is a, a batch that I just got a few hours ago. So we're going to be putting those into practice, put those into play. 21. So basically over 20 uh, different batches of fry. And the question here is how can I handle 21 batches of fry? Well, the answer is not easy. Oh, there you go. Um, there's, whoops, hold on. One, two, three more, three more tanks. I forgot about these three tanks. Now we're gonna talk about these three tanks in just a minute, but uh, they're, they're the focus of tonight. What we're going to do is um, just mention, okay, put you up there for a minute. And we're going to say like with 21 different batches, it's a juggling act. So it's important as soon as they get to get it on the, the small pellets, the granules, it's time to move them on. I have to put them in a bucket, take them over to Aqua Malik for grow out. And then I'm taking on more of the smaller ones. So these are resting on top of breeder boxes. And if we're counting all the spawns, I have good news. I put together, threw the tiger barbs together one more time. Even though we have a batch of tiger barbs, I wanted to kind of increase the number because I didn't think 30 was enough to select from. So, I'm going to show you the latest and greatest batch of tiger barbs that hatched just a couple days ago. And that's these. Let's see if I can see some. They're so small. They're just now starting to become free swimming. Let's see if I can catch one. There's one up there on the glass. Uh, kind of hard to see. They dart around at this stage. Usually it's best to find one on the front glass and then zero in on it. Hmm. Don't see any at the moment. But anyway, I saw a good half dozen in here that have, ha that have hatched. So this is good news. So we'll, we'll wait another couple more days. It's time to start putting the very smallest infusoria in here. And what made... made Meyer, great to see you. Glad you caught the stream too. Been wondering if you've been okay. So here we have um, another group of tiger barbs. And so these tiger barbs are just, you know, kind of the follow-up to these ones. These we did a few weeks back, if you recall. And they're, they're, they're really looking, they're growing fast. So we're gonna put them on a regimen of changing water Changing their water is very easy to do. All I need to do is uh, drop their water to um, usually about a third to a half, so somewhere right in here. I'll just drop their water. It takes just a minute or two by using the, the drain under there. I just turn the knob and there's a siphon in the back and water flushes out. We drop uh, the water level and then I just refill. There's a, there was a very tiny small batch of German Blue Rams about only six survived. I threw them in with the tiger barbs. They were about the same size and they've been growing up together just fine. So that's something I kind of learned. If you get a real small batch of something, sometimes you can mix it with another batch, especially if they're, they're a different kind of fish because it's easy at the later date to pull them apart. I don't like to mix the batches because if there's a problem with one, it's kind of nice to be able to identify which parent they come from. If you're wondering how I do that with all those so many um, basically, they have a number. And I can go straight to their parents. If I'm over at the Grow Out Center, I go to room number two on the left-hand side, the above rack, tank one. So I can just walk to it, and that's what I'm doing. I'm going second room, left-hand side, above rack, and then number one. And this was in room two, left-hand side, the below rack, and it was tank six. And so this one was, interestingly enough, the very next tank, tank seven. So these two are from two different pairs. We have a 10 gallon, 
that has this batch and they're all within three days of one another so it's kind of nice now I have some plecos that are going to be picked up um, next week hopefully and that's from Bill and he's going to take those I have a good number in here with of course a siphon drain and the same thing here siphon drain and the same thing here this is a siphon drain now this one's a little more messy and I gotta clean this one up a bit but I'm gonna tell you something that is important we'd like to know how the fish do on different foods so as soon as we're ready we're going to we're going to start the time clock we're going to take pictures of the fish in all three of these tanks every day they're going to receive the same amount of food but a different kind and every day they're going to get a water change at the same amount so we're going to drop it and we're going to come down and then we're going to ha huh, sheller aquatics thank you steve for joining us tonight and i i'm glad I'm glad that it started taking off. Wow, interesting. Like I told you, um, they're, they're, a, they're a magical live food because the more you feed, the more you get. I don't know how that works. Maybe it's by cutting them down, they just reproduce faster. I don't know what it is, but I've always had that. And then, of course, they go through periods when they're not growing so fast. And, yeah, I do skip feedings on some nights when I don't feel like or don't see that they're there. And I just uh, feed them, try to try to clean the in fact I can even demonstrate that tonight I do have one that needs to be cleaned out I'll show you how to do that so anyway back to the story thanks for Scheller Aquatics for that comment because it gives gives me something of interest to show you tonight but these are the three tanks they're all going to be set up equally and they're all going to be set for the same amount of food and they're all going to be set for different brands of food different kinds of food and we're going to see which one uh, is going to be the best so we'll do a a test for so many days. We're going to talk about this a little bit more tomorrow night because on Saturday night there will be a, uh, if you go to Aquamalik's web ch uh, channel, we're going to have a uh, dual conversation between um, he and I who will expound a little bit more on our thoughts concerning the, the big food test. So that's something to look forward to. I think it's going to be around 9 o'clock-ish um maybe eight ish be just be on the alert for your alerts and if you um um check uh, i will post earlier in the day when we decide and if you check my community post you'll know exactly what time and then we can we can do that so anyway that's the concept here now these tanks just to give you some idea these tanks are coming out after the um after the the big test these tanks are going to are three 10 gallons and they're going to be replaced with four five and a half gallons. And you're thinking, well, that's a reduction in total volume. Yes, it is. 30 versus four times four and a half times four is going to be only 22. However, I'm going to lose eight gallons, but you know, the, the benefit is number one, I don't have enough room here. This is not enough room to even get the, the box filters out. So it's a real problem because I almost have to pull the tank out to change the filter out. No good. Bad design. So that was something that was set up uh, initially. And I'm going to do it more like this because what I really want is, yeah, four tanks instead of three so I can set up breeding in four tanks. Also, they will, they will have the same overflows like these tanks. See, these overflows in the back. And the overflows are going to allow me to drip water into them and and flush the tank with continuous water so for example i have a main here all of them are set up for dripping i have it turned off just to show you and i'm going to turn it on i turn on the the water give it a turn and water will start to flow hopefully i don't see it's starting to flow very slow but in a second or two yeah it's going to start dripping there you go starting to drip and the dripping process begins. So that's how the breeder boxes will get a constant supply of fresh water. And these two are gonna get a constant supply of fresh water. And these guys can be hooked on to the five and a half gallons. But if I have 10 gallons here, they will come out to the, to the walkway. And as you can see, that's my walkway. I can't have as you can see, any space for 
reader boxes hanging out on the end here because it's just too uncomfortable to get in there to feed. Right now I'm suffocating because of the warm room. It's temperature says it's 82 degrees in here and I have the fan off because I'm doing live streaming. So it gets pretty warm and pretty uncomfortable fast. And, um, and I, usually, I usually have to strip down to be able to tolerate the heat. But anyway, these, these do have heaters. I think some of them have heaters, but I don't think they ever come on really. Um, when the tank, tank is about 82 degrees, it's room temperature at this, at this height in the room. So these are all gonna be no, no heater. That one is unplugged. So this heater won't come into play. I'm gonna make sure it, each of these three 10 gallons are equal. And I will put plecos in all of them. That will prevent the fish. I'll put a, you know about the same number of plecos in each one just to keep, help keep it clean and not let uh, some of them spoil or have any other issues. So looking forward to that. Now, while I'm here, I'm gonna give it a turn. This is, this is a batch of um, um, Lucy's. These are Cynodontis lucipinus. These catfish, uh, I advise you a couple things. These fish are not, they, they, they don't like a lot of water change. So their drip is super slow. So they have a very slow drip and I'm careful about overdoing it and only doing the water that has been properly seasoned. In other words, it can't be tap, tap water recently dechlorinated. They don't like it. There's something about Lucipinus. These catfish are highly susceptible to noticing chlorine. They're a great canary in a coal mine because when I see there's issues with water, they're the first to tell me about it. And the way they act is kind of, um, they jerk around, they swim crazy, they go up into the corner, the far corner. They do a lot of strange activity. And that tells you something's up, something's wrong. And if you see one in a tank that's got a pH crash, these are, these are Lake Tanganyika catfish. So they're hard water and higher pHs are normal and best for them. But if there's a pH crash, they will die, start dying, and when you see a dead one in the tank, immediately I know there could be a pH crash and I can test for it. Now, just to give you an idea of what these fish look like, I'm going to, I'm going to lift their leaf. Now, they do well with a place to hide because they like the crevice, they like to hide, and they feel comfortable, and it's important to do that give them a place to hide. So with my stick, I'm gonna just lift the lid. See what we can get here and see what we got there. Ah, there they are. Those, that's one of the recent batches. And they're at the stage now that they've gotten past the, the very small, small egg yolk stage and they're eating baby brine shrimp. And so, I don't overdo it with the baby brine. I just make sure their tummies are nice and pink and they do great. Now, we're gonna look quickly at the Lucipinus I got two days ago. Actually, on Thursday night, I went into the trap and pulled them out of here and they were just eggs, a whole, a whole bunch of eggs because the night before I saw the breeders were doing breeding activity. They were acting like they were breeding. So they hatched uh, the day after I put them in here. They were just eggs, and I took them out of the out of the uh, the trap in here. They were even well. They were just eggs. Now what they do now? I don't even have aeration in here. It's just water from their tank, and I leave all the muck that came out with them from the breeding trap. It's kind of important to also leave in there. And if I were to add water, I'm going to use the drip system. I'm just going to drip it in. And I can do that by just running a hose from above. And I have these two liter, 1.75 liter or almost two liter bottles. And I can just drip it in, watch it go up as long as I catch it when it gets to the top so it doesn't overflow. But still, I can add water very, very slowly and they'll do fine. At this stage, they're on their 
their egg yolks, egg yolks and I, I want you to notice they do a funny behavior on day one. As soon as they hatch, they start going up and down, up and down, up and down in the water column. Now, what they're doing, I don't know. They're getting exercise, but in normal, I think in the real life, that's when they get cold because, I mean, they must be just snapped up by any fish coming along because they just seem to go up and down, up and down. These I have not fed yet. I give them... See, you can even see some worms. These worms were in the egg trap with them. I fed those to the parents. They got in the egg trap, and those are some grindle worms. And they don't, they don't seem to harm anybody. They seem to be doing just fine. But their behavior is up and down, up and down, just kind of working off the egg yolk. And there's a good, I would say, another good hundred in here. They're doing well. This is our future fish for sale. We're, we're running low on Lucy's now. I only checked the egg trap when Malik had told me the other day, he said, you know, we got to start picking up on production. We're, we're getting low on our quantities. And I said, hmm, okay. So then I went over to the trap and started pulling them out every day and, and checking and checking. And I didn't find much until I saw that activity the night before last and I pulled them out, the eggs. So at this stage, I will put a leaf in there soon, and I'll just grab a leaf out of the decaying leaves that are in the um, 134 tank. We're looking at the back side of the 134, and uh, it's pretty pretty messy. It's got decaying leaves everywhere, and I put the lights down onto the night lights from these uh, aquanids, I think they are. So. Yeah, here's the, whoops, sorry. Here's the uh, 134s. I don't think we have any activity yet. There's some of them are quite quite young, you know. Uh, that one's a little too small. Uh, I've got some smaller ones. But mm -hmm. let's take a look at, let's take a look at, okay, so you can see here, um, there's a lot of muck on the filter. It's it's decaying leaves. Got a uh, the glare is just too bad, isn't it? Let me turn on the light. Maybe I can. There we go. Maybe it'll show. Yeah. See how mucky it is. I have there's a shrimp in there. But the nice thing is, very slowly the pH is dropping, and I'm watching it closely, monitoring it daily. And the water level is also dropping. And uh, I think I will need to add some some RO water, and that that way I can it'll continue to drop without putting in any hard water. And hi, Longfin Lagoon, and Jeff, and Aqua Moose, and all those who have joined us. Thank you. So um, as you can see here, I've got the I've got the pH meter running. It's down to six one. 6.1. So I'm between 5.5 five and 6.5. So this is a good thing. So let's see what the PPMs are in the tank. It's quite high, actually. I don't think it's as important to get that low, but I, I might put in some 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 uh, RO water, so that might drop a little bit. But I don't want to drop it too much without the um, loss of my pH where I'm at so now it's 62 I'll leave it at 61 well we'll check it again each day we take a look and there's my meter keep my meter uh, going I just don't want anything to happen to these fish pH crash uh, might be not so good I don't know what's going on here I don't think that's a trapping I think it's just they're kind of running from me who knows? We don't know what's going to happen. Hmm. It'd be nice to have a batch of those coming up. I have successfully raised these before. And I need to add some new leaves, it looks like. So, those are all things that need to be done. I will... Let's see... Oh! See, getting down on my knees, I see here's another spawn. So. I don't know what we're up to, about 23, 24 spawns. Here's a, another spawn of angels that um, I didn't notice. 
because it was low. It looks like they're going free swimming. Okay, I'm glad I, I noticed these because these mean I've got to start putting food in there now. I, I don't think I fed them yet. No, I haven't. So these were hatched uh, three or taken at 329 a week ago. So that's about right. Time to put food in there. Well, okay. Let me get up. So you can see from all this, all these different spawns, uh, the room is just, just plumped full. So the idea is if I replace these 10, you know, these three 10 gallons, what I'm going to be able to do is put breeder boxes outside of the five and a half gallons. So it's just more of a breeding setup as opposed to a rearing setup or using those tanks for what I originally had thought maybe a pair of uh, pistos or a pair of, of uh, rams or that kind of thing. So I think every fish room gets a little bit evolved as time goes on because you're always improving. I don't know of any fish room where uh, you're just completely satisfied and you never make any changes, you never tweak anything. I think it's just part of the nature of, of thinking about how something could be better and tweaking how when something doesn't go right, how I can make it better. I'm going to demonstrate that in just a second. Um, got a package, an e-packet from China and I'm going to open it up now. I know you didn't know that this was going to be an unboxing, but it's it's just a packet. It's not really a box, so. But anyway, this is um, something I just received yesterday, probably. And we'll open it up. And I'll show you what's inside. This is the kind of thing you can buy. I buy this because I can't go down to the Home Depot and get it. Don't know why, they just don't have these kind of things. All right, looks like I bought a bunch of them. I don't know if I needed so many. I just need one for now, but I, I saw a lot of application for these. So here they are, and what are they? Well, I'll tell you what they are. These will allow me to thread in, thread in to a half inch thread. I have right here, well, I did have right here, what did I do with that? Well, that's right here. Oh, here it is. Got it. Okay. Things tend to, if things move even two or three feet in the fish room, they're lost. So this is a T. And thank you, Sandy. Yeah, we need thumbs up. And everybody's been doing pretty good. Got a lot of thumbs up so far. This is a T, and it's got a thread. So it's slip, slip, and then a thread here. And this is something you can get locally, but then I'm going to put this in here and I'm glad it fits. So there we go. I'll, I'll use some plumber's tape and then try to make it seal, but I'm not gonna use this under pressure. What I'm gonna use this for is this is the tap onto your RO water system, but I'm not using it for that. Let's see, I have Okay. All right. Good. Now these these are different parts to the RO water. It comes with my RO. I bought these kits and stuff at the time I needed them. But let me demonstrate what I'm going to do. Now you can set up T's. Here's a T, and they just use these clips. Here's an elbow. Okay, there's an elbow. Now, as you know, one of the most successful things in this fish room has been my drip system, my water system with the 25 gallon tank up there for conditioning the water and then using it to drip, in this case, drip water down into the tanks. But what about these three 10 gallons? When I replace these, I wanna be able to drip the water also from that tank. And I've thought about different ways of doing it, but I came up with this simple way. I'm going to put this, let's see, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit higher so you can see what I'm pointing at. So right now the water comes in over here and drops down to the valve, right? And so from this I can turn it on and water will flow. In this case, I turn it on and water is now flowing down into the tank at the bottom. 
Okay. I'm going to cut into this piece and put this here. It's a T. It's going to be. So when I turn this off, there is actually water in this section that sits there. Okay, this is full of water. Now down below the valve is a plastic tube that I swing around to any of the tanks, but it's it, it, it could be actually drip out and maybe there's no water in this right at the moment. But this will have water in it. I'm going to cut into it and I'm going to put this up above, maybe something like that. So right, at, the light's kind of glaring, but let me see if I can blow it below the light. Maybe it'll show up better, I don't know, the brightness. So I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to take this piece and we're going to put it in straight like that. So now I have the water is going to go over my head at that height, very high. And it's going to go over, and then I'm going to put an elbow on it, and that just pushes in. Of course, the, the, this piece will be cut to the proper length. And then this gets pushed in, tab pushed in, and it's like a simple using this line here which is kind of like hard line but it's a little flexible and it's like for the RO water system it won't be put under pressure but it's going to have water in it and it's going to get the water over to the other side and I'm going to be able to turn the over there I'm going to be able to turn it open and close and it's going to run water into the the three 10 gallon tanks or shall we say um, oh very good question about why is it so high? It, very simple answer. It's because this is an aisleway and I walk and to get from this side to that side I have to either go up or under the carpet. So it has to go over my head and that's why it's going to be high so it's just out of the way. Also, it has to be high because you want the pressure from the water in this tank which actually it doesn't matter the water or the level of the tank until it gets all the way to the bottom where the bottom of this this tube is at. In other words, this tube doesn't go just to the top of the tank where the top of the water is. It goes down to the bottom where the pump is. So actually there's water in this tube coming out of the tank and I need to just tap it anywhere. I could put it here, 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 anywhere along above this knob. I can't put it below the knob because then I wouldn't be able to shut off this side of the rim and still have water in the uh, overhead. So that's how I'm going to get water from this side of the rim to the other side of the rim. And I'm going to run maybe a T as well and I'm going to run the water. I'll show you where it's going to run. This is a big project for this year. Let me turn the camera around. So we're going to run from here and then I'm going to run it straight over, over to the, the to the back cave. And then we're going to run down, and we're going to run across the three 10-gallon tanks right there. Yes, it's gravity-fed, but on the end of the um, on the end of the <laughs> see, uh, Jeff is asking. I thought it was gravity-fed. It is. It's gravity-fed because it's high. But at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, there is a pump at the very bottom, bottom, bottom. You know, I guess you can't see it from there. I don't even know if you can see it from here. Maybe you can. There's a pump at the bottom at the beginning of the, of the run. And so all I have to do is flip this switch to get a power assist. So if, for example, I run this dry and I don't... How do you re-siphon the thing? I don't use my mouth and suck out the water from a half inch pipe to get it to the siphon to run again. I just flip the switch and it starts pushing the water through and then once it's, uh, I can turn off the water and I can demonstrate that very easily. Um, let's say for example, I take my end, we're going to take it off, a, thank you for the super chat, wow, tremendous. Uh, I thank you so much, M Meyer. And Meyer, um, yes, hope your fish are doing well too. I'm going to put this in the tank here, and we're going to just turn on the water. I'm, first, I'm just going to, I'm just going to turn the knob. Okay, we'll just turn the knob and see gravity feed. So I'm going to give it a turn. There you go, and you have water. Now, 
while that's going, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the switch. Get the power assist. Can I go faster than this? Yes. Let's flip the switch. There we go. Now we see the water is coming in much faster. So that's the purpose of the pump. Now if for any reason I lose, the water goes all the way to the bottom, and I lose the fact that I've got uh, water in here for a gravity fed, the nice thing is I can run the pump. I just turned it off. Let's turn off the valve. I'm holding the camera at the same time. That's pretty tricky. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll get a commercial for Blake's Aquatics. Okay, Blake's Aquatics. Love Blake's channel. I hope he joins again one night, one day. That would be nice. So that gives you an idea of how I, I usually refill with using the pump when I want to speed things up. But it's also um, going to be just a... Uh, it's going to come over here across. Maybe I might even have to put a valve right here. You, you, you make a good point because... Maybe when I, when I push the pump on, it's going to increase the pressure here. That, that's a great idea. I better make sure there's also a valve. The, you can get valves, turn it on off valves is what they look like. See here? Let me show you. Okay, so there's a valve. So I'll put one of these in so that if I'm going to be doing work with the other side of the room, I can just open this up for my, you know, it's perhaps close it whenever I want to do, um, um, well, it's easier to put the camera down so you're not going crazy. So here I can just turn this, turn it off, and then that will allow me to just do what I want to do over here and stop the drip system on the other side. Since it's only dripping, it's okay. And then when I'm finished, I open up the drip system again. So I'll, I'll need that also put up here about there, yeah. So I'm glad you reminded me about that. I hadn't even really thought about that. But they could be put anywhere in the line, I guess. So this comes um, uh, basically the way. Before we leave, somebody asked a question. I think it was uh, Pete. Pete really is asking, how does water get back into the... Um, into the 25 gallon well there is a pipe I've run over here in that one it goes down and this one runs all the way over to the faucet okay it goes down all the way it, it picks up it goes all the way down goes around the room and voila that blue this is the main valve for the water refill so from here at the sink, I just flip that and water automatically starts refilling. So for example, as you can see there, there's an inch drop. I'm gonna just flip the switch. Let's just see if it works. I'm gonna turn it on. I am now refilling. You see the disturbance there? The water level is kind of jumping up and down. I'm now putting tap water. So that tank has um, a 200 watt heater in it at the bottom and it has aeration, strong aeration. So it has a big, and it also has, a, it also has an overflow. That overflow is in case that I get a little too full. So if I'm here, I'm standing and I'm watching it, but sometimes I get a little too full, it'll bring it down the water level, if it goes all the way up, you, you notice those holes there on the inside. Water starts going down into the holes, and then it will go over the arch and out the drain. So there is a feed. This is the water feed, and this is the overflow. And it's got a heater. It's got aeration. And it's got the... Um, the, the this is our gravity-fed, pump-assisted... Uh, system for bringing water into any tank I want just like I did to this tank I use this uh, hang on the side end on it and I also like to put on a most of the time I put on this I just snap this on to give a strainer so that the water doesn't come out in 
too strong doesn't come out too strongly so anyways um that's that's how the water goes back so wh where were we oh yeah getting the water in here i also want to take it across so i'll just probably follow that airline and get over to that side of the room so i'm going to have the drip system be able to drip out in both sides of the room and i'm going to be able to pick up these three tanks drip into these boxes and then those also flow into the tank behind it of course the breeder boxes if you if you flow from this side into the the tank um you're going to overfill the tank right but i have an overflow and you can see the arch right there in the back right and it will just overflow into the sink and that's how it gets down the drain so there it goes boom so that's that's the that's the idea anyway. I also uh, know that that the overflow system it, it seems complicated and but once you get the hang of it and you kind of follow the the logic, you, it does wonderful things. Especially when fry come into play and you want to just slowly change the water. I can change a tank overnight and it will be just crystal clear the next morning if I flush 20 gallons through it and it's only a five and a half gallon tank, you know, so if there's issues with bacteria blooms and whatnot, that's the way to go. So, so Jeff, if you, you want to see how to, how I put together the overflows, those ones that I'm showing you on the backs of the tank, I do have a video. Um, I wish, in fact, I'll go ahead and find that video. If nobody else does, it's in, it's how to make overflows. And I have a whole video on, on doing that. So if um, I'll put the link in the description after the after this video gets published, after this live stream is published, for those who are watching on replay. But um, I don't know. I don't know how I can live without them. Most people do the drill thing, and they're using sumps, and they're using that kind of a system. This is not that. This overflow is overflowing because it's overflowing trickle trickle water changes so i'm just dripping water into these boxes i'm just dripping water out of the tank behind it and i'm just dripping down the drain that goes around the room to the floor drain so this particular type of drainage is good because um, Let's see, you know, yeah. <laughs> Priming of the crossover tube is the struggle. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. How do you prime that? Well, I'll tell you how I do it. It's very simple. I take the whole thing and put it together, including the tube in both, in both legs. I take the whole thing and hold it upright and I dip it into a 20 gallon tank that's down below. So I have a tiger barb tank down below, right underneath me. Sorry about that folks. Not much elbow room here. And then I turn it upside down a couple times like this to get all the air out. And work with the, um, the tube until all, until the whole thing is completely submerged then lift it out of the toilet. You could do this in a five gallon bucket for that matter. But then it has to be completely submerged. But once I lift it up straight, just pull it up straight up. Don't tilt it too far or you'll lose your siphon. But just pull it up straight and then put it onto the tank. And then once it's on the tank, you can put it in position. But once it's full of water, it will hold because you have water in both legs. So no air is going to get into the tube. So the legs are holding water, the tube is holding water. Now all I have to do is drip water into the one leg and then because of the differential of the siphon tubes, the overflow, one will go in and when it goes in, it will push this water up and then go out to the drain. So anyway, that's explained and, and shown on the video that I have on my website. So I hope that's very helpful. I think that if you have any questions, these are the kinds of things that we can go into depth. In fact, we are so close, everyone. We're so close to 2,000 members. I was looking today because I wanted to, to talk about this tomorrow night, 
but it turns out that we're, we're going to hit 2,000 members here on Fish Easy within a matter of days. So I, well, the way I see it is I'm going to have to get educated on the membership business because I've already started making videos for the members. We just don't have membership turned on yet. But I have started making videos and what they are are short clips that I'm going to be putting out on a regular basis. And they're going to be shorter videos, but they're going to be super in-depth. Like, for example, um, I'm going to show you, like, on the case, the first series of videos that I'm doing are about the Black Rams. So we, we talked about the Black Rams. I kind of explain it. I answer a few questions. But we're just scratching the surface, right? There's so much to it. There's so much involved. So what I'm doing is is every time I do something, I'm just taking you along with me and I just set up the camera. It's a little more informal, you know. I may be I may be dressed appropriately for whatever moment I'm in. The point is just cover the material. You know, I'm not talking at the camera. I'm actually this is like I, you're looking at the work we're doing, feeding the fish, talking about it. And these are the kinds of films that are just like maybe 10 minutes long. And they're going to be part of a playlist that is open to the members so you can just watch it from beginning to end or you can watch them as they come out or you can and this will be part of the membership uh, Benny's and, and the purpose of it is basically it's for people who are actually more interested in the details so we can talk and I can express some great um, ideas maybe that are in my head but how do they come about okay take case in point you know this overflow how is it actually going to happen? Well, I need to make some, and I'm going to be making some with this this particular um, ref refurbishment of this part of the room. So when these three tin gallons are taken out, the four, five and a halfs are going in, I will need to make some more. I will make some more. And there's this one over here I've made, uh, Just you've seen it probably a hundred times. You see it over here? It's this one. This one was made for a 10 gallon, but I'm using it on a two and a half gallon. So the problem with it, of course, is that this is too long. As you can see, it's kind of sitting at an angle. And anyway, I took the Lucy's to the that were in here over to the grout center. So this is now available. I will probably put those other Lucy's that we were just looking at a few moments ago in here to grow out. And but this overflow is here just in case. It's help to help me. I, I sometimes do water changes by merely taking a um, two liter bottle and throwing two liters of water into the tank I just bring it up to the top I just go zoop, and then of course it naturally using this overflow it'll then drop down to what the correct level is so I don't even drain water if I want to do a water change I just pour water in that's how it normally works when people have an automatic change system they just throw water into their tanks with a timer and solenoid valve and and all that business and then the overflows take care of the rest but um, anyway this one is inappropriate for this size so I need to to cut this down a little bit all it needs to be is lower the key is having this lower than this and also um, whatever level you have the holes at so Jeff you know take note if this is this is the level at which you're going to see this these holes are going to dictate the level of this water so it's going to go up and it's going to start going down the holes once it goes down the holes, it fills up this leg. So as water goes in and pours in, it gets up this high. But this is higher than this. So see this? Going across from this level to this level, it's got to be lower. So what happens is, because it's, it's a differential, water then tries to seek its own level, they say. So what happens is once the water keeps pouring in there it fills up it's going to equalize to here right and then it starts filling up filling up filling up filling up filling up and then it gets to the spot where it's coming in but the moment that happens it tries to equalize so then the water tries to get from the right hand side to the left hand side and starts filling up this side so as water pours into the right hand side it goes up in here and starts flowing through to get to the left hand side but it is maximized at this level because it can't hold any higher because there's this big hole in the side. 
so this level right here it, it flows out simple as that now it's not under pressure there's some holes here to give air in here this is just you need the air it's not a siphon you don't want it to pull water it's just equalizing the water level that's all it's doing and that happens have you ever put um like for example what would happen if i took a tube put it from this side to this side and it was full of water and i had it sitting to the bottom of each side well immediately the air pressure says you know i'm pushing up here and then pushing down here and this one says you know i'm getting it's going to start pushing it down to equalize and water will start flowing from that tube from the left hand jar to the right hand jar and that's the same principle it gives you an idea that's what would happen okay very good that was a very good question I'm, I'm, I'm glad you got me going off on that tangent a little bit because it gives some good thoughts there there was something I wanted to um, talk about I, I think somebody said something earlier and I said that's a great question and I'm going to Remind me what that was. Is there something that somebody said, oh, I'm going to... You had a question. Now I can't remember. We get distracted. Distraction is the, the thing that always happens in this room. Oh, okay. The goji, jigi, jigi? Yeah, okay, good. Thanks everybody for joining and, and lots of thumbs up tonight. Thank you so much. Red Lasers here and Fish Tropic Canada. Let me see. I, I'm just trying to remember what was the subject we were going to. I went over the overflow a bit more. Um, Jeff uses Acclimation. The mini shutoffs are great. Uh, oh, it was the 25 gallon holding tank refill. I did cover that. Yeah, gravity and also the pump assist. Hmm. Yeah, Craig's catfish. I didn't see this comment earlier. You have had bad luck with the breeder boxes, but I have success. Well, I've had my share of problems as well. One of the things that you must bear in mind that I've learned countless times is if you're going to use the the sponge filter for the weir be sure you got to make sure it's it's sopping wet you've got to spray water into it and before it starts flowing you can't let that dry out it's got to have a constant flow also it will collect and then it will start to uh, fill up with detritus and so it's a very important in that case to be sure to keep it clean so what I do is uh, I watch the water level of these beater boxes very carefully because last thing I want is baby black rams for example to become fr fish food for the, for the inhabitants of the tank on the other side so what's important is to clean them out now what I do is I just take one clean it out but when I take it off I swap it with an, another one clean the one I just pulled swap it out with the next one and so I just get this assembly line going cleaning those cleaning those sponge filters and that's how uh, I get through the room and so when I leave probably all the all the breeder boxes have something that's clean and working properly you, you're watching the water level so it's right here for example this is the water level but if it gets up another inch, it's going to start overflowing into the tank as opposed to overflowing onto the floor. So that's how I know. When it starts to rise, it means the flow rate of the water coming in is greater than the flow rate of the water going out. And if the flow rate of the water going out is lower, it must be because the weir is clogged. Or it's just too much. I, I have seen you know cases where you're pouring too much water into the breeder box, but you never want to do that anyway. It's a small quantity of water. What you're trying to do is drip so that if you do it over a course of hours, the fish get in a course of hours a, a continuously fresh dose, but such a slow scale that they don't even notice it. 
all they know is it's like oh, water seems fresher instead of it being so full of nitrites and ammonia and everything that could build up if they're eating a lot and so forth so let's see if there's another comment yes uh, overfeeding that's right Steve overfeeding is a problem too now on my last live stream uh, if you notice at the very beginning I was showing you how I clean out the boxes these these ones have just a few fish in them definitely easy to overfeed very easy because you, you think you're putting enough in there for all of them but there's not that many they don't eat much but you saw like some of these angelfish boxes they have so many fry in them that I can put I don't know gobs of uh, baby brine shrimp and within an, within 30 minutes it's all gone crystal clear again they've eaten it all but they all look they all look stuffed and so then you got to stop you know it's too much so yeah overfeeding is an issue it can be have you ever tried Steve though um, have you ever tried though the drip method in the breeder box so the reason I say that is because with the drip method you're not bringing in tank water you're bringing in like fresh water that doesn't it has low ammonia right it's it's one of those things where you're flushing it out and it's going to be uh, it's going to have the parameters that that are going to be fine for fish as long as you first conditioned it by removing the chlorine and all it's not like I'm not saying tap water I'm saying conditioned water with a tank that I have and using that instead of tank water you can use tank water by using the the lift tube and you just got tank water right I mean that's just tank water but then as it as it goes back into the tank and then the tank gets you know soiled as it were and it's getting all the refuse and if it's just bringing it right back into the the breeder box well overall it's not as it's not as in my opinion it just it's not as clean as it would be the other way of course there's a larger volume of water so when you think about it it's definitely better to have the lift tube than nothing at all if you just leave no water going in and just leave it stagnant of course be very careful about that because if you start feeding immediately the water will start clouding up and it will go stagnant and kill all your fish very quickly so all of you who've said you know I've not had so much success believe me I have killed a bunch in a breeder box as well I sometimes if you have too many fish and what happens is the lift tube gets knocked off the lift tube something happens gets clogged there's sometimes it's sucking up bits of in my planted tank it might get bits of my plant material and if it's not throwing oxygenated water in you, they're going to use up the oxygen and you might have issues then and the fish will have a die off so no that's it, it's tricky business but I've learned I think as you can see with this many going on to pay lots of attention to them and I'm paying lots of attention because I have no other recourse I don't see how I can range up uh, yeah I could probably take out this 90 gallon side of the room take out all those tanks and set up a another nursery over there but um, I look at that and see how much work that would be and uh, it, it, like wow I don't know if I can get to that if, and if in the end it won't be but uh, adding more work I don't know it's just to me I, I'm fine the way it is I like to have a couple large tanks in here too for whatever reason right now I'm growing out the discus and they're doing great let me see I'll just show those off for a second they're doing very well the uh, cichlids that are with them are also doing stupendously so let's see if I can uh, make it a little bit brighter I have a yeah okay there we go I have two lights on this tank they're looking great but these but these discus are just sometimes I'm gonna get the black the black gravel out now that I had I had barbs in here before and the black gravel really makes the colors in barbs pop out but I think with discus, a light-colored background is going to do so much better to bring out their 
because they kind of like go dark when they on dark substrate and as you can see the dark on dark is not as nice when these turquoise go light their turquoise comes out more so that's what we're looking for is to get really nice there and uh, these guys they're gorgeous too and they're just like they're just so they're still young I haven't got their um, brilliance coloring yet but uh, everybody loves to get fed here they, they see me with the, the bottle right and they know it's time for feeding huh <laughs> here they come so let's put some in here we'll just trickle some of their they love this red food everybody loves a feeding right I feed them uh, two three times a day a little bit like this and then we're, we're gonna do a water change very easy again there's the uh, siphon tube so there's just a valve on the outside I just dropped the water from there to there so that four represents four minutes to refill from here to here uh, it's probably five and a half six minutes from there to there so how do I get water in it's it's connected to that tap water comes in actually right there you see the see the valve so I can just turn that on and that's straight tap water and it just fill refills on this end so I just fill it back up so they're getting tap water refills at a rate of about looks to me like about 15 percent I don't go more than that 15 percent and that's it but I try to do it so far I've been doing it about every other day if I did it every day it would be fine too but uh, it's kind of interesting to see what happens to the Lucy's. They, they know there's a little bit of chlorinated water going in. It's not enough to bother the other fish. But the Lucy's, oh, they start kicking around and they, they're over here and they're, they're high. They sense the food right now. This, this is a, a, a breeder, this is a breeder um, group. Uh, I haven't got any eggs from them yet. I don't know. They actually come from two sources, about six fish from one source and six fish from another. So they're not even um, brother sister. They're they're kind of a mixed group. And anyway, the the point being that they'll be over here, hiding up in the corner, far corners, farthest point from the freshwater intake. Why? Because that fresh water coming in is just got a little bit of chlorine in it. Definitely enough to make those fish jump and go crazy. What a nice discus. Hmm. These are our future breeders. I hope to pick up some uh, pears out of here. Future pears maybe uh, by next year. These are a um, year old. About a year old now. I think for discus they need to be about a year and a half, 18 months. Now start breeding. I'm just trying to put weight on them, get them uh, looking good, comfy in here, so that they'll feel comfortable enough to to do something. But they're beautiful fish, really. So let's see if uh, I've answered everybody's questions for tonight. Um, question, question. Is Medina here? I always run a slow airline in the center hole of the breeder box for just in case. Yeah, yeah, you know, that little hole is very helpful. It, it does you, I use it as a wedge. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but um, see how I'm just using it as a wedge? So, kind of like I stick it in there and it kind of wedges itself. Like, for example, I can, you see how I can pick this up? It's just wedged in there, keeps it in place. That little hole, sometimes I put food in. And sometimes, um, yeah, there's uh, a need for an airline. And I can put that in there. This one here uh, is actually getting a lot of drip. This one, I don't know why it's dripping so fast. I didn't think it was dripping so fast. Huh. Okay, maybe I just reduce the 
turn down the knob. I'm, I'm doing the knob thing right over here. If you, you can't really see it, but I'm just using that. I'm not actually using the correct knobs for water. These are actually for air. So they kind of rust out and I'm going to replace it. But I just didn't have the time to do it right. So I just did something quick and easy. Because I'm using airlines for the water gravity fed. There's a tube going up to the 25 up above. And sometimes we just do things simply to save time. There we go. I'm going to change the rate if it drops a little too much. But um, what was I going to... There was some... I thought maybe there was something else I was going to demonstrate. If that's all the questions tonight, I really thank you very much for dropping in on us tonight. And uh, check back for tomorrow night. It'll be not on this channel. It will be on the... It will be on the Aqua Malik channel, so stay tuned. I'll try to, when I get the, the link, I will probably post it on my community tab, on my community tab. So if you're, if you're um, subscribed to me, but not to Aqua Malik, you'll get it too. Maybe you'll get it both, I don't know. But uh, hopefully, thank you so much, everybody. I'm, I'm always so grateful to see Jeff here, Sandy, um, all there's there's everyone mayor Steve I could go on and on red laser everybody who's been supporting me throughout this uh, adventure of providing fish room tips and tricks it's been wonderful in fact uh, I just decided to keep on doing it at least while there's interest and I don't do it for any other reason but to support the hobby and to get more people interested in breeding their fish and enjoying their fish and especially being able to raise those hard to raise babies those fry that are very elusive that can be a challenge so support your local club um, we've got a lot of club activity going on this year everything's starting to pick up the pace again and so i belong to the peel regional aquarium club and that's in Brampton, the greater Toronto area. But without a doubt, there's probably, for you guys, uh, a local club you can join and be a part of and to support. It's, it's a place where you meet, make friends, you meet friends, and you go and they have these little mini auctions sometimes. If they have those near you, then you're really a great opportunity to pick up maybe plants that others have raise they don't do it on a commercial scale so when they have extra plants cuttings whatever you can pick up some and that's how i got a lot of the plants i've got is from the local club auction mini auctions and i use it to my advantage to pick them up usually it's very reasonably priced sometimes it's that like giving giving them away so you get great deals and then you can support others uh, especially it would be nice if any of you have any ideas for me. As the secretary of the club, I'm trying to find out other ways and come up with other ideas of how to encourage people to join their local club and get some benefits out of it. We have the online version. We have three speakers coming up in the next three months. And they, they're going to be posted on the uh, club website. But what's nice is that you can join by Zoom. Our fee is $10 for a year right for the whole year so if you join you can you can zoom in for ten dollars a year you know it's like you know it's just barely a buck or so um, to be able to especially if you're in, in the u.s i mean we don't have any limits to say who can join but if you go to peelaquariumclub.org and there's a place there for people to sign up for the zoom or shall we say the virtual membership and we know you're far away but you might like to join us for our activities and have a little club meeting and be encouraged and here's maybe a talk on a subject that you're interested in so those are things that I really like to promote and and ask people to look into 
And tomorrow, uh, hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk about our uh, new collaboration called Aquarium.biz. I'm hoping uh, that that will be something we can um, share with everybody tomorrow as to where it's going and, and how it can it can be uh, of great help. So that's it for tonight. I've kind of like told everybody about the extras and um, the mailbag. Well, I didn't, I've gotten some really positive results. Maybe I'll share those in the future. I did watch a um, um, great video. You know, when I watch anything from, from Keeping Fish Simple, that Nick is just amazing, you know, and I have to keep kicking myself, thinking to myself, there he is going about the, uh, the wilds, looking at rainbow fish in his uh, swim trunks with his wife, or I shouldn't say wife, I should say it's his, it's his uh, girlfriend, right? I don't think, well, I don't even know about his personal business, but I do know that um, he's, he's there and I, I'm amazed, you know, the sun is, you know, you've got, if I was exposed that myself to that much skin, to the sun, I mean, I would be burnt in no time. The sun is very strong here, but then I say he's in the southern hemisphere. I don't know, we have no ozone here, I don't know what it is. But um, here in the northern hemisphere, if you're only out an hour in the sun, you're going to get burnt to a crisp. But the interesting thing was, I keep forgetting that he, he's just finishing up his summer. He's heading into the fall. We're heading into the spring. And so it's no wonder that, you know, I'm watching his videos with, you know, envy because it's like, wow, the weather's so nice there. And I'm just remembering that we're, we're so different up here. So the opposite right now. I also uh, watched the... the um, I saw Chris Stubbs' videos. I saw a couple of those in the last couple of days. Thank you, thank you, Chris, for sharing those. Uh, the over the back filters analysis and comparison. Interesting. I think I've used the um, Aqua filter, the Aqua uh, Aqua clears, and I find them to be the best. Quiet. You have to be careful sometimes, uh, but that's true with any over-the-back filter. I'm very leery about using them because here's a guy who uses breeder boxes and hangs them over, and yet, you know, when I try using power filters over the back, I always seem to have a flood somewhere. Fortunately, the last one, my wife came in and found it dripping all over the floor, and it was okay because it was only about a foot away from the floor drain, so it was onto the concrete and then down the drain so it wasn't really a big deal but those those make me nervous for that reason in this fish room we use one over the back filter it's an aqua i think it's this aqua clear 75 and it sits on the 40 gallon up above over here and used on my grow out tank so i like to make sure there's plenty of uh, flow in that tank but it's the only one i use and i try to keep my eye on it so that I don't have any issues like that. That was an interesting video. Also, um, TM Aquatics. I watched that video, a couple of his this week. Very good. After the swap, he's had some great news from new fish. That's always exciting to see, pleckles and all. And then uh, finally, um, the, the video he just put out was he said something in one of the membership videos which was very sad and that was somebody stole some of his fish you know he's at the swap he's got bags of fish out people are coming by checking them out and that just that just burns me up you know somebody stealing somebody's fish that, that just I wish there was a way to videotape to see who's doing these things who would do such a thing but it's certainly not, it's not good. That is such a horrible thing to experience, to have your own fish taken. And of course, uh, he was very good about it. He realizes that this, this does happen, but I, my heart's out to you, Tom. Very sorry to hear that happen to you. I don't wish it upon anybody, but yes, you gotta be careful. I guess there's just some nefarious people out there.
It is what it is, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sandy. Yes, Sandy, you joined us uh, for one of our club meetings. Yeah, thank you so much for joining on uh, Zoom. And, uh, yeah, tomato. Yeah, red. I don't know how Nick... He must, he must put on a lot of sunscreen. That's all I got to say. And uh, be careful. Mayer, thank you so much for joining tonight. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated and always so kind. It, it helps me to be able to be members also for others. And I use... I use those uh, little little uh, gifts for being able to join and learn things myself on YouTube and other places. I still think I'm a, I'm a member of several several different websites, several different channels, a lot more than than uh, shall we say a lot more than I have time for. But it is what it is. Supporting the uh, the fish fam people and what they're doing is a good thing so I don't mind so thank you very much everybody it's now Friday night I think uh, I got to get out of this shirt so I can cool down put the fan back on and and get to cleaning a few tanks before I head off to sleep but it's been a pleasure to be with you tonight just to chit chat and we'll be talking more perhaps tomorrow night hopefully I'll see you there and thank you again for your support and all the care that you put into sharing the streams or the videos with other people. And this is how it really grows when it, by word of mouth. I think that's the best way. If, yeah, sure, thumbs up helps. Yeah, sure, you know, subscribing. But I think you're all subscribers. I, I don't know. But I am getting more new subscribers. And I do get them. And I, I don't know if anybody's looked. Can somebody look right now and, and give me the number of what it is? It should be... About 1900 and how close are we to 2000? I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to tell. I'm doing a live stream, so I can't look up and see. But it would be nice to know how many we need to get. Sort of not quite a countdown because the number goes up and down a little bit. It says 1.99 thousand. <laughs> so yeah, we're almost 2000, but uh, the actual number is probably 1.99. That means I'm less than a dozen people away? Ay, 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 that is tremendous. What a supportive group of people. Thank you all for joining and just being a subscriber. I think that's the best way to support any, anybody that you, you see, anybody that you watch, anybody, just be a subscriber. To me, that's the number one thing. And, and uh, memberships for me, I think, are for those who, who, who want more in depth and want more details so that's what I'm going to try to do for those who are really more into the details and there will be some opportunities to um, I want to do some things a little different well there go the lights looks like the fish room is shutting down so I'll sh sign off too and say good night everybody and uh, thank you again for everything and we'll see you soon of course as always keep it real